Welcome to My French Web Radio, the radio of the Alliance Française of Malaysia, based in KL and Penang. Today, you're listening to an episode of the program Five Questions to Cinq Questions à. Enjoy! Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, My French Web Radio, the radio of the Alliance Française of Malaysia, based in Kuala Lumpur and Penang. I am Asma, cultural coordinator at the Alliance Française of Kuala Lumpur. Today is Wednesday, March 23rd, and we're recording the fourth episode of our program titled Five Questions Two. And I'm currently with Tenku Zatasha, president of the board of directors of the AFKL and Princess of Selangor. Good morning, Zatasha. Bonjour. Good morning. Selamat pagi. And thank you for being with us this morning. Merci beaucoup. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Zatasha. You have a strong connection with France and its culture, especially through your involvement within the AFKL since 20, 2010. Sorry. But this interest dates back to way earlier in your life, as you have, for instance, studied at the Sorbonne University in Paris. So, thank you. My first question would be, could you tell us more about your interest in France and why did you pick up Paris to, depart, to, do, to do part of your studies? Well, it started very young. I learned uh, French when I was uh, very young, age eight years old at school. And uh, in the English uh, boarding school system, French is an obligatory subject along with uh, English and maths. But the minute I started learning French, I absolutely loved it. And I was like, this, this is the language for me. I, I fell in love with the, the French language. And the first time I went to Paris was when I was 14 years old. I went with my best friend and stayed with her family because her father lives in Paris and works in Paris at Avenue Marceau. It was just above a boulangerie in front of the bake, in front, uh, above the bakery. And so every morning I could have coffee and hot chocolate and croissants. And uh, I toured uh, Paris and it was an incredible time. Um, and then when I was 15 years old, uh, I did a French family exchange program. And I stayed with a French family, uh, total strangers, uh, in Le Luc au Provence for three oh, wow. months <laughs> in that summer. And of course, we only spoke French, but it was a fantastic experience. I absolutely loved it. And, uh, you know, from then on, I, I learned French um, at university. It was my degree, which is French and Spanish. In fact, actually, at the time, I spoke better Spanish than I did French. And that's when I realized I need to improve my French. So I went to study um, at the Sorbonne University the Diploma Cours de Civilisation Française and Langue Française. And that is when I decided I absolutely adored Paris, my time there as a student. But I'll tell you a little bit more later on about all of that. <laughs> Great. Yes, we have a few questions coming up. So to switch back to Malaysia and the current situation right now, what are the two or three main causes which, according to you, uh, require more attention from Malaysians? Well, um, as maybe some of you know, that I created some causes, some campaigns uh, since 2016. The first one was Say No to Plastic, hashtag, and that campaign went viral. Um, I did a lot of beach cleanups, underwater cleanups. Um, I did a lot of lecture universities uh, to talk about the plastic pollution. And then the other uh, campaign that I did in 2016 was called Zero Food Wastage. And that was an initiative I created about saving surplus food in order to feed the poor, because there was so much uh, edible food that was being thrown away. Mm. So um, I worked with Kachara Soup Kitchen, and I wrote to all the different hotels during the month of Ramadan for their buffet food, the surplus food. And we saved tons and tons of food. I worked with Tesco Supermarket, which is now Lotus Supermarket. Uh, we worked with Ion Supermarket. So we've been saving all this surplus food uh, with Kachara Soup Kitchen. And now I'm also working as the chairman for Yayasan Food Bank Malaysia, rescuing food to feed the nation because, you know, it's sad to see a lot of food that is thrown away. And this was inspired actually by France. So. Back in the day, I saw that France had, um, you know, the, the law of, you know, not throwing away 
food from the supermarket. So that's what inspired me to start those uh, campaigns. And it's, you know, to this day going very strong. So those are the two that I, that I created. And, um, but of course, I have other causes close to my heart. I've got a um, patron for Make-A-Wish Malaysia, uh, yeah, some food bank that I mentioned, and uh, of course, Alliance Francaise. <laughs> yes, very good uh, transition to my third question. <laughs> So, what is your most beautiful experience, your best souvenir at the Alliance Francaise of Kuala Lumpur? And in your opinion, what are the key events that should not be missed from the Alliance? That was such a great question when, you, when I received that. I was like, okay, well, I think my best uh, souvenir, best memory for Alliance Francaise was back in 2014. Um, I was invited to Paris to celebrate the Alliance Francaise 130th anniversary. Wow. And we were invited to the Palais l'Elysée to meet the President of the Republic. Uh, back then was François Hollande. And we met with him and we had all the different Alliance Francaise uh, from around the world that were there to celebrate. And they also had a panel, um, panel discussion where each continent would speak about uh, about their culture, and so actually it was called La Culture est une fête. So I represented Asia and therefore Malaysia, and uh, I spoke about the La Culture Malaysienne, the Malaysian culture, about um, you know all our, the harmony between Malays, Chinese, Indians, how we celebrate each other's festivals and religious um, events and things like that. So. And that was in front of 200 other members of Alliance Francaise around the world. So that was always a very special memory for me. Um, and as for Alliance Francaise Kuala Lumpur, you cannot miss our very popular Le French Festival, uh, which this year we will be hosting, which I'm so glad since uh, after the pandemic, we've not been able to do that, um, where we will have French films. But usually even like before the pandemic, we had French films, we had art exhibitions, we have gastronomy, we had dance. Uh, that was before, is what I'm saying. Uh, in uh, But so this year is about French film. And, um, and what else? Uh, and of course, we used to have the 14 juillet celebration here too. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that pans out for this year. Yes, 2022 uh, is yeah. uh, the comeback of many activities at the Alliance. Uh, so hopefully they will all take place this year. Yes. Um, so regarding your Parisian years, so you, you talked about the Elysee already. Um, what is your most memorable experience? And what's your dearest souvenir from France? I have to say it is when I was, as a student, um, I had my, I rented an apartment, tiny studio, 15 mètres carrés, so 15 square meters. So it's a really tiny studio in the 5e, in the 5th arrondissement, um, on Rue des Écoles, because I was studying at La Sorbonne. And um, it was a five floor walk up, no lifts, you know. I mean, it's very typical Parisian. It's, you know, I felt like it was like the Emily in Paris was the Zatasha in Paris. <laughs> and, uh, but what was amazing about that time was um, everyone in my neighborhood, in my quartier, we call it, the, in the quarter, Everyone in my quartier were like friends and family to me. So I got to know the butcher, and uh, his name was Loïc, and he used to um, give me my, used to sell me the, the meats and everything at half the price because I was a Malaysian <laughs> student. I thought, and everyone was very jealous. They were like, how come she's getting it at half, half the price? I was like, but I'm an étudiant malaysienne, you know? And, um, and then I got to be friends with the owner of the brasserie across and her son. And I used to have coffee there every time. Talked to all the regulars in the brasserie whilst we're standing there having our coffee and our croissant. And I used to have a lot of my meals there. And even at some point, like uh, the butcher, I'm like, I didn't have a, an oven. It was such a small studio, it was just, you know, stove. So he said, it's okay, I will cook for you. And he used to make me the, the quail roasted on his rotisserie and prepared everything for me. I mean, it was really something so special. Even the, uh, the vendeur in the, in the marché, um, the, the market seller, he would talk to me, you know, and we would chat and... Um, 
it was a really special thing because it's in French they call it la vie du quartier and I really experienced that and I've lived in many cities around the world I lived in Barcelona for two years and I lived in New York in London in Kuala Lumpur but I never experienced that and that was what was the best memory and I decided from then on I will come back to live in Paris I promised myself this is my dream so when I left, I was really sad to leave because it was only three months when I was doing the Sorbonne. And uh, everyone in the, in the neighborhood was like, oh, you must come back and visit us. And I came back like two years later and they all remembered me. And they were like, ah, Zatasha, the, stu the Malaysian student, she's back. And when I went to visit the market, he was like, so, comment ça va, la Malaisie? And I was like, you remember me after two years? He was like, of course, you're the Malaysian student. So that's something really special that I don't think you'll find in other places. That family feeling in the neighborhood, you know, is really special. So, yeah, that was for me the reason also why I, I just absolutely fell in love with Paris. That's a very sweet memory. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. La vie de quartier. Exactly. Very specific. <laughs> um, so to jump on, to jump on this, uh, if you could bring back three things from France right. uh, to Malaysia, what would they be? It can really be anything. And you know, for me, it had to be food, right? <laughs> it was food based. I was like, if I had to bring back three things, so it would be three kinds of food. I do love the truffes, the truffles. Mm. Um, I love as well oh, bouillabaisse. I really miss that. A good bouillabaisse fish soup, you know, because with the, I don't know, I explain it in, in English, la rue and sur le couton, how do you, I don't know even how to explain I guess someone will just have to Google that up <laughs> in English. Um, so bouillabaisse, truffles, and uh, what else? Oh, I can't think of the third one. Something sweet. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Reminding me. Yes. A coffee eclair. I know it's a very strange request, but here you do get eclair. Paul has a chocolate eclair, caramel eclair, but I absolutely love coffee eclair. So that one I would definitely bring back. Wow. Yeah, now I'm hungry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so to end on a French... Uh, and uh, Malaysian uh, way, um, I would like to ask you some very quick questions. Okay. Uh, it's up to you to answer uh, with or without explanation as you want. So, Tour Petronas or Tour Eiffel? C'est tellement difficile à choisir. <laughs> it's so difficult to choose. Uh, Tour Eiffel. <laughs> Tour Eiffel. <laughs> I do love both. I do love both. And you know, the lighting in, in Tour Petronas is done by a French company. Oh. Ah, voilà. <laughs> so, What's the name of the company? Uh, that one I can't remember, but it's uh, the lighting is done by a French company. Ah, I'll look that up. Uh, <laughs> um, Mamac ou Bistro? Bistro. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Jupe portefeuille ou sarong Sarong. <laughs> nice choice. Yeah. Ayam goreng ou poulet roti oh, I love both. Poulet roti. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm really the French in this. In Between my, my husband and I, I'm more of the French and he's more of the Malaysian. <laughs> He loves all, I love cooking all French food, so yeah. You switched roles. I switch, I switch, but I love both. Don't get me wrong. Ayam goreng always for the win. <laughs> Balade à vélo ou trek dans la, dans la jungle Trek dans la jungle, ça c'est sûr. <laughs> eh bien, merci beaucoup. Thank you, Zatasha. Uh, Terry Makassi. And um, it was an honor to have you with us today. Merci beaucoup. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Au revoir. <laughs>